Hey guys, I've been looking for ways I can improve my testing procedure. And one of the things I see people testing with in the group are these TP4056 charging boards. These charging boards take 5 volts input and they charge your battery on this side up to 4.2 volts at 1 amp. I tend to stay away from projects like this just because I don't have a lot of time to work with small components and I don't have a whole lot of knowledge on the individual components themselves. But there are quite a few people in the community who are making PCBs like this to build your testers on, which use TP4056s or similar designs. This particular board was designed by Philip Seidel. Seidel? So basically I took uh, the files he provides and submitted them to JLC PCB, and I printed off enough of these boards to build 10 chargers. Using four TP4056s a piece, that's enough to test 40 cells. So in order to get started with this project, you'll need your PCB boards, You'll need one four cell holder for each PCB board. Of course, you'll need your TP4056s. You'll need four of those per PCB. Diodes are for reverse current protection. You'll need four of those per board as well. And fuses, these are two amp fuses, um, five millimeter by 20 millimeter. Again, four per board. Um, and then you'll also need the fuse holders. You need two holders per fuse, so that's eight holders per board. So when you get your TP4056s, they come in a long string like this, um, all connected together. And they're already grooved out in between each separate TP4056, so all you have to do is take them and bend them like this, and they will snap apart at that crease. Uh, so we'll break off four of these. Now, on the PCB, you'll notice the negative side comes in here and this whole bar across the top is conductive and your TP4056s are going to sit on it like this. On the underside of the TP4056 most of the area is non-conductive. These little rings here are conductive but they do sit above this bus bar where they shouldn't make contact. Regardless of where they sit, I do want some space between my TP4056 and the PCB so they're not sitting directly on the board. So I cut out this thin piece of cardboard. I'm just going to lay that down between the terminals. And I'm going to solder the TP4056 in place. And then once they're soldered in place, I'll just slide out this cardboard piece, which will leave a space between the charging board and the PCB. So to get started, first I'm going to put the diodes in. These diodes are to prevent your TP4056 from being destroyed if you do connect the cell backwards. But what you need to know is the side of the diode with the line needs to go on your positive terminal of the TP4056. So on the charging board, the 5 volt side is a side with the mini USB terminal, and the output side is labeled battery, and you can see the battery plus and the minus there. So we'll just slide the diode through and let it rest, and then we're going to use these legs to solder it to the PCB. With all the TP4056s in place, before we solder, we'll just double check that on each one, the line side of the diode is on the positive terminal of the charging board. And then I'm just going to put a small piece of masking tape across the top to hold the top part in place since we are soldering the bottom first. That way they're soldered nice and straight. So these diode leads are pretty thick. You will need a reasonable iron. I believe this is just a 30 watt. Yeah, this is a 30 watt. It should be good enough. If it's not, I will break out the 100 watt weller, uh, but we'll give this a try first. I'm just going to use a pair of flush cut dikes to cut off these leads and we're going to save these leads that we cut off because we're going to use them later on. Now on the top side we also have to solder each of the diodes to the charging board. These pads on the charging boards are very small, so it is difficult to get good uh, thermal conductivity there. Um, just go over them and make sure you have them soldered well and there's no cold solder joints left behind. And now we can remove the masking tape we have put on temporarily. 
So for the next step, we need to solder the five volt inputs. There's eight pins across the top. And I said earlier that we were going to reuse the legs we clipped off the diodes. We're just gonna put each leg through each hole here. And we're gonna use these to solder the five volt input. Turn the board over and we'll solder the eight across the top. And with that completed, just trim off the extra legs from both the top and the bottom. So next we'll put on our 4 cell holder. This is just a standard 4 cell 18650 holder. I bought this from Keith's store. The next step is these little fuse holders. Now when you put these on the PCB, you'll see one side of the fuse holder has a tab like this. The other side does not. Um, this tab is the back of the holder, so the fuse is going to come out of this side. So when you put the fuse holders on the board, you'll obviously want to make sure the tab is on the back of each side, that way the fuse can sit in the middle. And these things are kind of a pain to work with. I find the best thing to do is to hold them with your thumb and then use a pair of long nose to, to bend out both tabs in the back to hold them into place. Um, just like this. So I'm going to go ahead and put the other seven on. All right, with all of the fuse holders in place, it's time to solder. Now with that complete, the last step is just to snap in your fuses. All right, so just to go over a little bit about how this works, you'll put your 18650 cell in like this. Positive end goes towards the TP4056. Your positive lead comes out of the TP46 into the positive of the cell. The negative lead comes over to one of the fuses, through the fuse, and then down through the negative terminal. So the idea with this diode here is that if you accidentally put the cell in reverse, the current is going to rush from the cell through the diode and blow this 2 amp fuse. So then over here there is pads on each side. There's two for the positive and two for the negative. And the idea behind this design is that you can build a couple of these boards. So if you had, imagine I had a second one here, and then all you'd have to do is connect the positive across the top and the negative across the top, and you can chain several of these boards uh, together like that. Um, I'm not sure what the current rating of this PCB trace is. It would be interesting to know that, to know how many of these you can put together. Um, but these pads certainly are thick, and the trace certainly is thick, so I, I don't think you'd have any problem wiring several of these in parallel. One board is going to draw about 3 to 4 amps. So to test this PCB, I just wired up two alligator clips and soldered them directly to the positive and negative pads. And I'm using a standard ATX power supply. This is a really old power supply. It's only rated for uh, 22 amps on the 5 volt rail, but it will work perfectly for testing these TP4056s. Alright, so you got two blue lights on the top to indicate they're on. I'm going to pop in four cells now. Again, positive side towards the TP4056. And as you put the cells in, you'll see the lights turn to red. A red LED means charging. Once the cells are fully charged, they will turn back to blue, and you'll know that cell is ready to be removed. All right, we have four cells charging, uh, so we're going to come back when they're done and check the voltage of each one of these cells, just to check the voltage that they were charged to. Um, I know these do have an accuracy, 
I'm not sure what that is, but it's not going to be exactly 4.2 volts, but it'll be close enough for my testing and for my project. And also, real quick, um, I just wanted to put the clamp meter on and see how much current this board is drawing with four cells charging. And it is consuming 2.39 amps. Um, that's actually pretty good. So you probably could wire several of these together in parallel. Um, Alright guys, we're back. Uh, the cells have finished charging. All four LEDs are blue, which means they completed. You got 4.14, 4.15, 4.17 and 4.20 so as I said before they're not 100% accurate that is part of what I've read from other people um, and also these cells have been sitting here it's actually been two days since I filmed the first part so uh, I plan to use them to pre-charge batteries before I put them in the opuses and then recharge the batteries once the opuses have completed their capacity testing um, since these are just chargers they are not testers as well I will post a link uh, to Philips website where you can download the Gerber files for these boards. Um, they are free. You can upload them to jlcpcb.com. It was about $13.50 uh, US dollars uh, to order 10 of these boards. If I had to take a wild guess, I'd say it cost about 3 or $4 to build one of these chargers. The only downside is that it would be a lot nicer if they were single cell holders instead of a four cell holder because it does make it difficult to get cells out. On a single cell holder, you can grab down both sides and pull it. So what I find works well here is I just keep a small common screwdriver around and then you can just quickly flip them in like this to pop them out. Um, but again, yeah, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching.